Hey, Sammy fam. It is shakshuka time. Let me go get my dipping bread. I got my cheesy naan. such a huge fan of shakshuka. It's so easy to make and can really be whatever you want it to be, as long as you have some Mediterranean flavors available. Um, it's basically just, you know, eggs cooked in a spicy red sauce. Uh, I think there are a lot of different versions of this that kind of center on different cultures. I like one that's made with a lot of harissa paste so it's spicy and earthy and super delicious. And there's like red pepper flavor in there and obviously a lot of tomato. This one is made with um, harissa paste, the, the one you can pick up like at Target or Whole Foods. Um, and they have it at a lot of other grocery stores too. It's pretty common now. It's by a brand called like Minos or Mikos or something. Then we have just a like 12 ounce can of crushed tomato, uh, capers. I had, I have a whole bunch of capers in the house because I've been making this clam seafood pasta that uh, I put capers in, it's so delicious, but I put some capers in here. Then I have roasted red peppers. You know, I just bought, you know, a jar of them and put like half the jar in here, kind of smashed them up. What else did we put in here? Lots of garlic, lots of onion, red onions. Uh, obviously eggs near the end. I like them to stay a little bit runny, but that's like personal preference. You know, the sauce is still hot. So once we break it up with the bread, it's going to mix it around. I got this naan on sale, which is basically why I made the whole dish because I got the cheap naan. Uh, this is some leftover mozzarella for making pizzas in my last video. Oh, look at that egg run. So hot. Got to be really careful of this hot cast iron. I didn't really think this through. Might need to get a utensil. Oh, and there's feta or feta cheese. How do you say it? Um, I used a little of that like oikos feta in brine. And then I was over at the co-op the other day here in Albany and they had a Bulgarian feta and it was like $5 for a giant tub of it. So I bought it. I love buying feta that comes in brine. Keeps it fresh for as long as you want it. The brine actually tastes really good to drink, in my opinion. Um, and it's just, it's juicy and moist and more delicious, I think, than the, like, the dry, uh, like, American-made stuff you can get at, like, you know, like a Walmart or something, not to be overly elitist or anything, but that stuff might be okay, like, maybe on a salad or something where you don't want it to be too wet, but that, uh, Feta usually just tastes like salt to me, and I want a little bit more like funky, fermented-y, tangy-ness to it. Mm. Oh, I got red sauce on my pants. Wonderful. Scoot in a little bit. I also put Calabrian, I don't know if that's how you say that either. Calabrian, Calabrian but chilies, Calabrian chilies, and chili oil in here to make it spicy. Mm. Some dry harissa flavoring, like a seasoning blend, uh, cumin, and there's more, oh, secret ingredient here, not so secret, but a touch of cinnamon. I find when you're like aiming for North African kind of flavors, Moroccan, just a tiny little bit of cinnamon, not a lot, just like one little shake in combination with spiciness, in combination with cumin, cayenne that can really get you going into a, a good earthy, funky place. 
it doesn't taste like cinnamony. It just tastes fuller. Like when you're making or when you're eating, you know, say Indian food and there's a ton of different spices in there, but it doesn't taste like any one spice. It all comes together with something new. Ooh, and this part skim mozzarella melted on this garlic naan is really good. It's such a good winter dish. Also that it's cheap. Because you don't have to use all the ingredients I used. If you have a jar of um, crushed tomatoes, that's you're like 90% of the way there. Because then you can kind of season it however you like. I would suggest at least um, like roasted red peppers and then, you know, Red pepper flakes, um, cayenne, cumin, or paprika. I put paprika in here. Something for a little tang if you got it. Be it feta cheese, be it pickled red onions, be it the capers like I have in here. And you could make it more Italian if you want. You could make it more North African like mine. There's really a lot of a lot of independence and creativity available to you in a dish like this, much like with like pizza. And that's part of why I love it. And it's easy to make. Oh my. Oh that's hot. I think I need to get like a fork and a spoon. I can't wait till I have my studio set up. I don't have to sit on the floor. Oh, there we go. We are still probably many months away from having a studio space set up in the basement and it's coming up to the tune of like almost two hundred thousand dollars now which is insane but it'll be great as long as i can get the workers to do the work oh, making a mess when i moved up here i got more stuff on my pants the realtor kind of warned us, he said, oh, things, you know, move uh, slower up here than in the city. I didn't really make much of it. Mm. But it is crazy, like, it takes so long to get a company to come out and give you an estimate for a project. And then sometimes after they come to visit your house, it takes them a week to like email you the estimate. And then sometimes they'll have an online system. It'll approve the estimate. You'll put down a down payment. And then you have to wait for them to get back to you to schedule it. And then you have to wait for materials to be ordered. Permits. Oh my God. I was lucky at least this week I had to have some work done uh, on the stove behind me. I had noticed after that stove was installed that I thought I felt cold air coming in around the edges of like the kind of shroud, the faceplate. I was thinking they should have put insulation around the metal pipe that goes up the chimney or they should have put in what's called a block off plate, which is a plate that blocks off the rest of the chimney other than the metal pipe going through the middle of it. Um, 
So over a month ago, I asked them if they could come check it out and see if it was installed correctly. It didn't add to my confidence that like a teen boy had installed it. The rest of the crew was older men and they were out working on top of the chimney, dropping down the metal chimney liner to meet up with the stove. And they left the kid in here to install it and it seemed like his first time. Didn't know what he was doing, was struggling a lot. It got yelled at by the other guys a lot. I felt kind of bad for him, but it made me worry that he hadn't done a good job. So this guy comes out yesterday after a month, which I, you know, I understand I already paid them there like, like $13,000. Um, they have no reason to come out other than saving face because I'm not going to give them more money. Oh, the guy comes out and says, okay, we'll take off the faceplate so you can see into the, the fireplace and see what the insulation situation is. Um, faceplate would not come off. Dude had to like FaceTime back to the, their, their shop where they have other of these units set up and like someone there was like trying to take it apart and show him, but this one was put together incorrectly. So it was harder to take apart. It took like an hour and I felt so bad. And the whole time I'm thinking he's spending, you know, half his day trying to get this faceplate off. They're not getting any money for it. What if they open it up and it's perfectly filled with insulation and I'm just crazy and thought I felt cold air coming in. I would have felt like such an asshole. But lo and behold, once he finally got the faceplate off, we found there was absolutely no insulation around the chimney liner. So we were just open to cold air, you know, coming down the chimney and coming into the house. Wonderful. But he had a whole roll of insulation with him, you know, chopped it up, stuffed it up in there. So hopefully that'll help keep cold air come from coming in the chimney. And it's important to help the, the actual pipe heat up faster so that when you do have a fire, you don't accumulate residue creosote in there. And it helps you burn faster. But I'm not going to try it out today because it's already, it's like 2.30. And I think um, my wife and I are going to go out after she's done with work and run some errands or something. So even if you just put one load of logs in this fireplace, it can run for like seven hours. So I didn't want to start it and leave the house. Maybe I'll test it tomorrow. Or when I get back from visiting my parents next week, because I'm leaving in a couple days to go to Missouri. And then hopefully when I get back, we can start some more projects here in the house. I have a lot of painting to finish. Um, I had my wife had an electrician come out and give us a quote on installing light fixtures and updating um, some switches and some like ancient plugs. We're doing some of it ourselves, but some of it, the wiring is so old that we're a little bit scared to deal with it. Oh, excuse me. And some of it, the electrical some of the electrical system is like not up to code. Um, some of the fixtures are not mounted properly, so you can't mount the new fixtures we want to put in. So we're having the pros deal with that. And we're going to put in like recessed lighting in the kitchen and recessed lighting in the new addition to the house. It doesn't really match. Um, the craftsman style of the rest of the house, but in the kitchen and in the addition to the house, it makes sense like stylistically. 
the rest of the house we have cool kind of slightly bare bones industrial light fixtures picked out. I actually put some of them together and they're sitting around the house just waiting to be installed. But it'll be so nice we haven't been able to eat in our dining room because I've had the power turned off in there for two months ever since we were going to install our dining room chandelier and we found out that the previous chandelier that was there was not attached correctly. And we needed someone to come in, fix it, and get it safe. So maybe I can have like Easter dinner on our dining room table. Which I, I love our dining room table. We found this cool classic but modern table hardwood we're trying to only go with like hardwood on most of the furniture although we, we do have some cheaper items that we found that we thought looked cool but we got a good deal what was it like wayfair i think maybe it wasn't wayfair something like that but hardwood table and chair set we had four chairs um and it was like 1800 bucks or something which seemed like a steal for hardwood but it's just been sitting there unused I think it was the day before Thanksgiving where I went to replace the light fixture put in the new chandelier because um, we wanted to have Thanksgiving dinner in there and then we found out nope no can do but next year Next year we'll have things. Well, I guess this year we'll have Thanksgiving dinner in there. And I can't wait. Because this Christmas is a bit like a construction site. But I'm hoping by next Christmas we can be mainly done with the large renovations. Although there will be some things like replacing the whole front porch, tearing down the falling apart garage, and doing some landscaping that may may not happen until summer 2025, I think. Mm -hmm. And this will keep, and I can dip some jalapeno cheddar ciabatta I found at the grocery store. Oh my God, it's so good. I'm gonna dip that in this for like dinner. Put it in the oven at 400 degrees for 10 minutes and the ciabatta comes out melted cheese on it fluffy crispy edges Whew, so good thank you guys for watching i love you so much i really appreciate you joining me for a delicious meal i gotta go try to get the stains out of my pants oh my foot's asleep